Good morning and welcome to Virtual Church with Holy Cross Anglican Church in Vancouver. My name is Lucy, I'm the vicar at Holy, Cro Holy Cross and uh, if you haven't joined us before uh, you may want one of these. This is our service booklet which is available as a PDF on our website at www.holycross.vcn.bc.ca Click on the Holy Cross uh, Virtual Church tab and uh, you will see just underneath the video there is a PDF download there. Alternatively, if you've been to an Anglican service before, you may well remember and uh, just know some of the responses. Um, in the booklet, the responses for everybody are in bold and I will be pausing during those times uh, for you to respond. Uh, our psalm today uh, that we'll say together is Psalm 128, so be ready for that. And um, if you have a different version than the NRSV version that I'm using, don't worry, just read along and uh, we will just worship together. Yeah, okay. So let's take a minute to ready ourselves for worship and prayer. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. So we'll say the verses of Psalm 128 together. Happy are they who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. Let us pray. Gracious God, giver of life in its fullness, you take no pleasure in human want, but intend your bounty to be shared among your children. Lead us in the ways of justice and peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. Okay, so our first reading today comes from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what your wages shall be. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his people, his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why have you deceived me? Laban said, this is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, as his wife. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind 
of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who, whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who, inter who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it had grown, it is the greatest of all shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, who went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of Christ. between the words that are spoken and the words that are heard. May the Spirit of God be always present. Amen. This week's Gospel is like a round of quick fire from Jesus. We can imagine him sitting there spitting out these short punchy similes about the Kingdom of Heaven and what it's like. On their own, they're just a collection of sound bites really, but in the greater structure of Matthew, that we've been hearing for the last few weeks now, we can imagine people sitting down and listening to Jesus' parables. They would just be ordinary people like us. We've heard the parable of the seed and then the one of the weeds, and Jesus has been teaching and working miracles and acting out contrary to religious authorities and to the Romans during the time that we've been following him. Each week, as we hear these parables, I think about what it must have been like. I try to imagine what it must have been like to sit with Jesus for an hour or half a day or a full day listening to his teaching in the crowds as they gathered around him, nodding at his wisdom and marvelling at the stories about his acts of healing and mercy. The people of the time, as we know, lived under the oppression of Rome. There was the kingdom of Rome, the great empire, and then in comes Jesus speaking about the kingdom of heaven, 
where people can suddenly imagine themselves not only having enough, but perhaps even having more than they need. Imagine Jesus coming to the end of the parable of the weeds or the explanation of the parable of the seeds and someone in the crowd says, that sounds amazing. What is the kingdom of heaven like? And just like that, Jesus is off spitting out these short, punchy lines. I imagine the look of surprise when he tells them about people doing ordinary tasks, going about their jobs and realizing that the kingdom of heaven has come to them, that their hands could do something like the woman with the flower to usher in this kingdom, to free them from the kingdom of this world. I live next door to an elderly Italian couple. The wife is an energetic cook and gardener and loves to share how she makes her fresh tomato sauce, her fritters, her Italian salads, and so on. The tomatoes for the sauce must be homegrown. They must be Roma tomatoes and the fresh basil must only be added after all the tomatoes have been briefly blanched and then skinned. The small details, she says, are what make her recipes taste both unique but also authentic. She makes huge batches and jars up all this sauce and her family come round regularly for food. This summer, she taught us how to take clones from tomato plants on her balcony. And it looks like the day of the Triffids over there, I'm telling you, with huge Roma tomatoes laden with fruit along the wall. Now my neighbour is using the same seeds that she bought in a packet years ago because each year she harvests her own tomato seeds and keeps growing plants and keeps giving them away and each year more people benefit and the gift of tomatoes and incredible pasta sauce goes on. On the face of it that might seem like a really small thing but the little things matter and that's what Jesus is drawing our attention to in today's gospel. Jesus tells us that from very small things can come abundance and unexpected things. If we think about a single tomato, for example, a tomato contains anywhere between approximately 150 to 300 seeds, depending on the size. If each tiny seed can produce a plant, then thousands of plants can come from a single seed because as they go on, they just keep propagating. The growth can be more than we could ask or imagine, exponential. Each time we act in faith, that is what can happen, the ripple effect. That act has the power to grow with help from the Holy Spirit, and that's what Jesus is saying. The kingdom of heaven exists in the places we don't expect it to exist, the places we might overlook, but it can create huge results. We've been speaking about our ministry here at Holy Cross and how we might respond in faith to the current place and time we find ourselves in. In the kingdom of heaven, we all have a role. So we've been asking, what is ours? What are our strengths? What are the needs of our community around us? How can we match our strengths to serve them? Now, when we're taking the Jesus way of life back to everyday life outside of church, we might think we're too busy or we're not special enough to serve in God's kingdom. We might be give it, begin to give in to the idea that in the modern age, the church has really become obsolete and has no place in our society. But every time you see something like my neighbor offering plants, kindness, spaghetti sauce, and including anyone and everyone, those are the times that we see the glimpses of the kingdom of heaven shining through. When you wear a mask in a store or on transit to protect those around you, that is a kingdom of heaven moment. When we see a need and respond to it, even though it will take us out of our way or affect our own schedule, those are kingdom moments. When you give without any thought of reward, the kingdom of heaven has room to expand and grow. Think of the people in the parables from Jesus today. Someone sowing seed, a woman baking bread, fortune seeker, a merchant, and a fisherman. All types of people from all different walks of life doing different things. They're all very regular, like us. Now, had Matthew been writing today, he might have said something like, a retired couple were out tending a community garden box. A person was making a meal for their family. Or perhaps, a large batch of tomato sauce. 
Sorry, I lost my place there. Ordinary people is the point, going about their ordinary days like you, me, and my neighbour. Like us at Holy Cross. When we think about ordinary things, I think it's fair to say that we don't expect to be surprised. With that in mind, how often do we then miss signs of the kingdom of God in our midst? Are we missing the treasure of great worth as we go about our day? How can we help usher in more kingdom moments in a time and place like this, where it seems like God may not be doing anything? And that's what Jesus says, God is at work. The Holy Spirit is also always at work, guiding, creating and propagating these kingdom moments into more than we can ask or imagine. We've been asking ourselves the questions about how we can respond in faith during this time. And as we try to discern where God is calling us, the ordinary people of a small church in a big city, God will show us the way if we keep asking. And that's the piece. Don't be frustrated. Don't give up too early. Even a little church like us can take encouragement from parables like these, where we see even the smallest things creating huge amounts of growth for the kingdom of heaven. God will show us the way if we keep asking. So keep praying about it and we'll get there. The outcome will be more than we can ask or imagine because that is the business that God is in. If we're prepared to say yes and follow Jesus every day, loving God with all our heart, mind and strength, it will be so. service continues on page four of the bulletin if you have it and we're going to say together the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand, sit or kneel as is your custom for prayer. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy. We pray for the world, for the worldwide Anglican communion and for our diocese of New Westminster. Also for our companion diocese of Northern Philippines, Bishop Brent Alois and all the clergy and people of that diocese. Pray for our partner parish in Toucan and their priest Paddy Ezra Catalan. We also give thanks and pray for the work of Chuba Diocese in Japan, Bishop Peter Ichiro Shibusawa. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are victims of war, famine, injustice or natural disaster, especially at this time for all affected by the coronavirus and those who seek to bring relief. For all refugees and displaced peoples, especially Nadim Iniat and his family waiting for their acceptance letter from Canadian immigration. Lord, in your mercy. In our diocese, we pray for our Archbishop and Metropolitan, Melissa Skelton, and for the, for the Diocesan Refugee Unit, Shannon Muir, Chair, Shakuntala Soden, Diocesan Refugee Coordinator, and for the 127 ha Society for Housing, Joan Seidel, President. Lord, in your mercy. In this neighbourhood, we pray for All Nations Church and in Toronto for St Andrew's Japanese Anglican Church. We pray for our community here at Holy Cross. We give thanks for the reopening of our space, for our virtual church community, and we ask for God's guidance in discerning our path. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all in need, for those who have asked for our prayers, especially for Masao Takasaki, Elizabeth Nato, Mark Raja, Iris Reimer, Miwako Minato, 
Naomi Shimizu, Norman Pym, Carolyn and May Bailey, Alana Tatchell, Chikako McCauley, Daryl Hall, Basil Azumi, Sawa Matsuga, Suneko Maki, Mari Ohashi, Umi Sugawara, Thomas Koren, and Jamie Leakey, and Beryl Hooper. Please take a moment to name those friends and family on your own prayer list in silence or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, remember the faithful departed, all those who have gone before us, naming them now in silence or aloud. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're on page six. Gathering our prayers and praises into one in the language closest to our hearts, let us pray the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and grant us peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope that I'll see you next Sunday. I do have a couple of announcements. The first one being that the memorial service for the recently departed Gwen Lammercraft is tomorrow at 11 p.m. It is a closed service given the COVID-19 social distancing restrictions and I am working with the diocese to see if we can have it recorded or streamed so that uh, people will be able to tune in and pray with the family and friends of Gwen. In addition, the Sunday following, which I believe is Sunday, August 2nd, let me just quickly look. Yes, Sunday, August 2nd, the Memorial Garden where Gwen's ashes will be laid to rest will be open between the hours of 12 and three for anyone who wishes to come along and say goodbye to Gwen, uh, pray for her, pray for the family and sign the book that they will be bringing down. I know that uh, many of you knew and loved Gwen very much as she did you and uh, I'm sorry that we can't have a bigger funeral. Bible study goes ahead at 1 p.m. on Tuesday and that is via Zoom. You can get those details through our website, again, on the virtual church tab. And I had a couple of questions about online giving during this time. You've got a couple of options. If you'd like to make donations to the church, you can do that monthly through our uh, pad donation systems. And if you email me at lucyholycrossvan at gmail.com, I can send you a form for that, which you return to the diocese. Alternatively, if you'd like to donate a one-time uh, offering, um, then you can go to www.holycross.vcn.bc.ca and on the home screen that you'll land on on that website on the right hand side there is a button that says donate now and that comes to us through Canada Helps so please give as generously and as often as you can and uh, if you can't you're still very welcome with us uh, at all times thank you for being with us I'll see you next week